There's no paparazzi, no glittering lights, no massive Hollywood sign here, but here in this amazing land known as Cornwall, or in the part that we have just come across, Cornwall Village, this, my friends, is an area that is home to many celebrities uh, in and around the area, uh, past and present, like Whoopi Goldberg, Kevin Bacon, um, Michael J. Fox, uh, to name a few. Yes, and uh, this could be somewhat of a lengthy CT vlog for you today because I love my Cornwall well I don't know I can't really say it's my Cornwall I'm not from here but I would live here if I had an awesome work from home job and my wife did too because Lord knows she wouldn't want to commute from here to Avon God forbid, but see the beauty right here, all right, look at the hills, there's so much to cover, um, I want to show you a few of the, the charming spots that make Cornwall what it is, and so we'll jump around and I'll have you uh, check it all out, all right, so the very first destination that I will be going to happens to be where I get my raw milk. I think there's maybe a small handful of farms throughout Connecticut that actually provide raw milk. Um, I want to say there might be one in Granby, one in Woodstock, but the one I know for sure that I might be a little bit biased towards that has served me since I've been 18 years old is this one in Cornwall. It's now under new ownership and it has a new name. The place that we're going to go to is called the Calf and Clover. And if we're lucky, we might even see some kittens. So let's go check it out. Look at those cows. Probably the cows that I'll be getting my milk from. today. Oh, there's one of the kitties. Oh, there's two of the kitties. Uh, my wife is definitely going to love this. Oh, look at the cat. Moving along. Hold on. Oops, I think. Oh, thank the Lord. I almost lost myself out of the snow. Hi. No. Hi. Oh. You're all big now. Hi, guys. Oh, there's a lot of action going on. Hey, I came here to get my mill and not play with the cat, so. Oh, there's, there's the other two, right there. All right, so let's go get some milk. Get some 
fire kraut, kimchi, uh, Danbury man, CBD tea, creamery, uh, and yogurt that's actually made right here. And then this is what I came for the raw milk. I have locally sourced eggs as well. No one. So let's get ourselves. Let's see. And got chocolate milk. Oh yeah, there's some pretty cool stuff right over here too. Meats, livers, ground beef, bacon, uh, cheese and such. Honey, whatnot. So, yeah, everything's done right here. Oh, they now take PayPal and Venmo. That's good to know. They did not have that before. So, if you don't have cash on hand, you can now Venmo the peeps. So, I will fill up my order right here. Clover, we will explore the next thing, um, maybe Dumpy Town for you in a moment. Um, I don't know if Bulls Bridge is in the corner or not. Stay tuned. Okay, we're back on the road now, and I've got my milk right there, as you can see. And I was actually able to show you some kittens and cows kittens that are all grown up now that are the size of adult cats basically but when I first saw them a couple months ago they were all definitely little babies they were probably about 12-13 weeks old and uh, it's amazing how quickly they grow up but anyways we're still in Cornwall and uh, as I promised you there's a lot to be seen here now, aside from the celebrities, as I alluded to before, there is one other thing that's extremely famous. Well, maybe two things that are really, really famous in Cornwall that make Cornwall what it is. Uh, the first being, of course, is the infamous Dudley Town. Now, before I show you any of the routes, to get to Dudley Town, I will frankly tell you first and foremost, you are not allowed on the premises. It is private property by the Dark Entry Force Association. And unless you have express written consent in advance, they will forbid you uh, from walking around. Now, you might ask if you're not familiar, what is Dudley Town? Well, Dully Town supposedly is this cursed old village that had its roots going back to, I don't know, I think it was like around the 1600s, 1700s. And uh, a lot of settlers came down from the UK looking for independence and religious freedom and wanted to establish a village in, on the grounds of Connecticut, just like any any other civilization would want to have it start in the greater New England days, in the, the colonial era, you could say. And um, Dully Town just happened to be one of those civilizations that kind of had a cursed tale to go with it. So, trek number one is Bald Mountain Road, and this is off of Route 45. 
which would be going towards Warren that way. And any of the routes are basically giant hills. And like I said, there's there's at least three that I know of. Bald Mountain Road. Uh, the other one is Dark Entry Road, which is the next closest road. And then on the other side of the entire mountain ridge is uh, Dudley Town Road. <laughs> which probably is like the most scenic route. This road right here, I don't know if it's really concerned to be the most famous, but back in the day, I liked this one the most because it had the shortest walk to the foundations of the old village once you got to the, the entryway. Um, as you'll see, there are actually homes over here. And so, like, the precursor, too, is that, you know, all the, the neighbors are always on watch, make sure that no one's trespassing and, and going on to the, the, the old settlement. So, Dully Town is a failed settlement, basically. Uh, they say it was cursed, you know, people were getting struck by lightning, people were becoming mentally ill, and blah, blah, blah from being here. And uh, see, there are a million private property signs posted, but yeah, once you get past that gate, there's a trail that leads right on down to Dudley Town. And I haven't been there since I was in high school, frankly. But I remember it being very peaceful, you know. The party goers would tell you, oh yeah, it's, you know, it's definitely cursed. There's demons and ghosts and blue orbs of fire dancing in the treetops and stuff. And, you know, I'll be the first person to tell you, I firmly believe in anything that's supernatural and whatnot. But I could not tell you based on my three or four hikes through these woods that I ever had any kind of like eerie feeling that something was really amiss or something. Not to, to rule it out, but you know, it's like they say, oh, there's no creatures stirring over there. There haven't been throughout the 70s and 80s. The reason for that being is that, oh, we used something called DDT back then, and it was our way of kind of eliminating all the mosquitoes and pests and stuff and that's why the tick and flea populations were down and stuff like that but we quickly realized of course that DDT had more negative consequences than benefits from continuing its use and therefore we stopped because uh, we didn't want to completely destroy mother nature and ruin our grounds and water sources and whatnot so we stopped with the bad chemicals and we let everything come back um so we are now leaving oh yeah i'm not going to show you any parts of delhi town I, as i said i don't advocate going to delhi town if you want to go please write to the dark entry forest association first in advance maybe they will grant you um, a permit to actually go and explore the lands and say you want to do it for research or whatnot which is what I would do um, I, there are a few books out there I, I read one by the Reverend Gary Dudley you could go find it on Amazon at Amazon um, I think it's called The Curse of Dully Town or something, but basically he is a descendant of one of the, the ancestors that actually helped establish the town hundreds of years ago. And uh, he is a reverend, as the name implies, but he's also a historian. And while the book has many, 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 many grammatical errors in it, it's still worth the read because he tries to pinpoint and, and cover things historically, factually, and try to dismiss all the absurd um, rumors and, and blasphemous legends that were started about how people were going insane and blah, blah, blah. 
he's got reasonable and uh, logical explanations for much, much of the stories that, that transpired there to dismiss the fact that Dully Town itself was a curse. I think the only curse about it at the end of the day was that it was just a very poor settlement for, for um, harvesting anything and whatnot. It was, you know, just a very ragged mountain and it's just didn't, wasn't like a really good place to, to grow vegetation and whatnot. Not like the valley right here in Cornwall Village. fire department here and you got the, the the country market aka general store right here and this is where route four and seven diverge more pretty scenery that way but here is route number two dark entry road two out of three. Oh, there's a bank right there too and this route is a little crazy. I think this gets all the, the guts and glory for being the most infamous, probably because of the layout of the actual road. As you can see, it's very narrow. It's super windy. And uh, this is probably the road I'm the least familiar with. I think I've only gone up this road maybe one or two times tops and then as you just saw there's a no parking sign you will get towed and whatnot um, so yeah they they really 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 don't want outsiders coming in so I advise if you are to do anything you do what I do and you can just basically climb up these roads say you got really close to Delhi town and then call it a day and leave it at that what you choose to do beyond that is up to you and i take no responsibility for that whatsoever because i am not going to bail you out of jail but there you see tons of private property signs and uh, as you can see lots of houses Ooh, it gets crazier and uh, yeah I really 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 don't remember any of this and uh, oh dear lord um, and then yeah there's like trail markers here I'm gonna have to explore this for trail purposes for hiking and whatnot um, even though I do have all-wheel drive the terrain is very very muddy and I don't want to risk anything and, uh, oh, what have we here? Okay, so, oh, this is the other reason why you would want to come to Cornwalls because um, you want to go on the Mohawk Trail. So this is actually part of the trail right here. Let's see, no park. Parking is located at the bottom of the hill to your right, just around the corner walk. And only no parking on. Oh, so all right, you're not even allowed to park where I am right now. There's a house right there behind me. Oh, I don't want you to see all my junk. <laughs> not that I have anything to hide, but you know, it's just after Christmas time, and there's a lot of stuff that's a little unkempt over here and whatnot. But my goodness, this is really really pretty so this is part of the trail you're not supposed to park where I, where I just sat for a, a quick moment you're supposed to park at the very bottom of the hill and walk all this so I don't know I'm only gonna tell you this because there's only like eight of you people who watch my video and if you haven't yet and you like what you're seeing be sure to subscribe and hit the like button cha-ching that boosts my ego for 20 seconds and uh, you can pretend you're uh, giving me a Christmas present by doing that by making me happier I will try to make you happier and we will all have a better 2021 
this is wild so yeah this, this would be quite the hike right here so there's tons and tons of miles um, if you go to all trails get that app if you have a smartphone and if you're into hiking like I am you'll you'll definitely want to explore stuff here don't mind my car it has not really enjoyed the, the winter so far um, the exhaust or something's gotten a little rattly of late but I have driven almost 130,000 miles within the course of four and a half years on this thing so uh, I guess it's to be expected right don't mind me that I'm rambling so much uh, I do that a little bit when I'm nervous I guess it's better than not talking at all, right? Because you do need a narrator if you want to actually take the time to watch this. Oh, that's a beautiful hill right there. I remember when I was a kid, I used to think that was the only time. Like, it's got to be something like obscenely and just sticking right out and whatnot. But no, that's not the case. So, oh, there's the post office, which I don't think I ever noticed. And uh, a couple months ago, there were. A couple of protests going on, and uh, there are uh, people advocating for Black Lives Matter. And this and that. I think Cornwall, by and large, despite the rural setting, is uh, probably one of the, the very few towns in Litchfield County, Connecticut, that actually swings more blue than red. And I'm not going to tell you who I vote for, but uh, this is not a political vlog by any means. And we're going to stay out of that. We're all in the fight together to just try to make things better for ourselves and everyone else, please, right? So anyways, got a little off topic. We're back on the main drag again, Route 4. You can see a nice river right there. We're going to go through the other part of Cornwall. Um, it's as I, I kind of mentioned back when we first started doing this thing, uh, that there's different sections to Cornwall. There's a Cornwall Village, Cornwall Bridge, West Cornwall, stuff like that. We're all piecing it together to make it just one Cornwall, right? And uh, yeah, an another place that would definitely be uh, of interest to you I would suspect if you're into sports and skiing is that we have Mohawk Mountain over here I will show you that after we do the next scenic leg of Dudley Town so um, yeah let's get to that in uh, now so this part of Cornwall that I'm about to show you is so scenic and picturesque. I've literally had dreams about this place. Over here there's a soccer field. I played soccer there a couple times back in the day. Back when I was adventurous. When you grow up in a place like Litchfield County, um, there's not really a ton to do in the small towns. And I lived in the, the biggest micro municipality of the bunch, that is Torrington, a town at the time, I think, of 32,000 people. And uh, part of my inspiration from those days after I got my driver's license was that me and my friends would just drive around all around the state looking for cooler places and things to do and whatnot. So this is Pine Street and funny enough this is actually where I made my last passport they were doing a special and I was in a, in a rush. And so, the, the town office building right here, they were doing a special where you could literally get your passport done very promptly and whatnot. And me living in, 
you know, just a stone's throw away from Hartford, it's kind of crazy because, you know, we're, we're definitely like a solid like hour and 10 minutes outside of West Hartford or so. Um, but my wife and I were like, yeah, we need to get you that passport. So you, and, uh, oh yeah, she needed a passport too. Now that I think about it, we needed those passports so we could actually, uh, promptly go on our honeymoon. Hi guys. But, you look right over here. This is the landscape. I had dreams about even before I had ever even driven on this road. It's been quite some time since I've actually gone down here, but you know, I the job that I do in, in real estate photography consumes a lot of my time, so I'm grateful to have any little bit of free time that I do have, and I, I came out here basically, one, to get myself some more milk, and then two, uh, say hi to my parents back in Torrington, hello, and uh, see, people are nice here in Cornwall. And I figured, hey, you know, I got a few extra minutes. I don't have a lot going on. You know, I'm gonna make another vlog, or as I like to call it, a V-log, because, you know, it's, it doesn't sound as good as blog, to be honest with you, but um, that's just my opinion. Oh, kill to live in one of these homes. I know to some of you, you're like, yeah, great, there's nothing special about that, but I don't know. Wake up every morning and see that right there, which you can totally hike on, by the way. I think that's part of the Mohawk Trail, and there's, I forget exactly how many miles, I want to say like 20, 25 miles that cover a lot of ground from. Salisbury through here all the ways down to Kent and back um, some of the hikes will definitely take you multiple days where you'll actually need to bring a tent with you to, to sleep in in order to uh, gain the full experience I would definitely be an advocate for that So this is a let's see, dead end. No kidding. Maybe they don't want you going up any longer. Well, like I said, the locals over here really don't want you people going into Dudley Town for any reason whatsoever. So they will put up any kind of signs to scare you off. But when you see turkeys like that, how could you pass that up? Look at that beautiful historic home right there. So we're still making our way down. This is officially Dudley Town Road, by the way the third and possibly final way to get to this infamous land. Why did the turkey cross the road? No, 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 no. Stay on your side. Stay on your side. All right. No, nope. come back. All right. Oh, yes. A little bit of flying action. How exciting. I love it when my vlogs have a little bit of action packed to them, like flying turkeys. And 
here we go. We make our ascent up another scary road. This is one of those roads I would historically say, oh, I'd want, I wouldn't drive up that thing in the winter time. Well, as you can tell, it is December 31st. It is New Year's Eve. So that can only mean one thing. It is winter time. See that snow? But global warming is real, folks. We might get a little bit of snow. We might get a little bit of ice. But it never really sticks around. It never gets that cold any longer. And now we're on a road of death. Someone's been doing some vlogging. I love how they tell you dead end, no kidding, but then there's like no no trespasses. Oh, well, there's someone's house right there. Private property. So people still do live here. I am making a documentary more or less. So hopefully we're left alone. These stone walls. Um, who knows? They may have been put up originally around the, the time Dudley Town was born because we are approaching the front entrance to it. If you're watching this and you happen to be a Cornwall Airbnb host and your property happens to be on this road or either of the other two mentioned like dark entry road or blah 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 uh, bald mountain road then uh, let me know I would be interested and love to stay at your place because um, I could use a little peace and quiet and get out of living in the city well here we, we go we have come to the end of the road right here so in the olden days you would take this trail and walk up it for about a quarter mile and then you would see foundations galore and uh this kind of reminds me, I'd like to make an amendment to my palm print vlog sometime because as much publicity and notoriety as Dully Town gets, I actually do think the Bear Hack Forest settlement in palm print is much better to see. And um, I can actually confirm that that place is haunted, but that's a story for another time. We're focused on Cornwall today. So that's it. That was uh, the last stop before Dudley Town. The third, the third way. Um, and probably the second most famous way. And as, as you can see in all three ways, there were millions and millions of private property, no trespassing signs up. So you cannot blame anyone but yourself if you're caught doing something stupid and going in there without uh, proper authorized uh, notarizing in, in advance all right so I think that will conclude the Dudley town part but Cornwall would not be complete if I did not show you a couple more cool places. So, skiers and artist aficionados, take note, the best is yet to come.
think I see where all the snow in Connecticut went. Looks like there's a little big shortage of snow. Um, probably a lot of artificial stuff used over here. Now, I'll be honest with you, I haven't skied in a very long time. I took a break and then I went back to it, and then I think the last time I went skiing was maybe in uh, 2006 or 2007. There aren't too many places in Connecticut you can go to. We got this one, Mohawk Mountain, which was actually nailed by a really bad tornado. Uh, there was like a really bad storm here that took a ton of trees down, and that happened like in, I want to say like the early 90s, like 1992 or so. Uh, you'll probably have to fact check me on that, but the twister thing did happen, and this place was devastated. And actually, it worked. It kind of worked out too because it opened up a lot of stuff to expand the trails and whatnot. Um, but people have said you can spot Kevin Bacon hitting up these slopes now and then. But uh, he's just a person, folks. So if you do see him, throw him a smile. But you know, don't bother him. Uh, Ski Sundown is another place in New Hartford. I love that town as well. There's uh, plenty of trails to hit over there. And then there's a few other places like in Woodbury and uh, um, Mount Southington that I'm not too familiar with that are smaller scale than uh, what you have here. Not to say that this is like a huge mountain by any means, but at the very top of this thing, um, uh, it's part of the Mohawk Trail and you can actually look down from like the top of the slopes over there. The trailhead is actually uh, just kind of like around the corner, um, right off of Route 4. I haven't done that trail yet. I... I aim to do it at some point though. I don't know if it'll be in the winter, but maybe early spring. I like to do it before it gets too muddy, of course. But I've shown you ghostly village road things. I've shown you uh, a ski resort. I've shown you a great place to get farm fresh meats, eggs, and raw milk, but there are still other wondrous things Cornwall will entice you with that will surely make you want to spend at least a day or two over here. So here we go, we're going to go check out um, I think it's technically called West Cornwall, but it deserves the name Cornwall Bridge, and you'll see why. We are now entering West Cornwall, and unlike East Haddam, no, West Cornwall is not a town of its own. It's really just a part of Cornwall, but you know, it's its own section and I'm sure it probably has its own zip code and whatnot. But the neat thing about West Cornwall, honestly, is that it's probably the most town-like part of all of Cornwall. And you'll see what I'm gonna what I'm saying in about a minute or so as we get down dipping into yet another valley over here. Cornwall is a very uh, 
hillish, mountainish kind of town for Connecticut. It actually has kind of like this like upstate New York, vermont -y kind of charm to it, as you can see. So over here, this is where there's like a bunch of shops and there's restaurants over here. Some train tracks that go north and south. Um, some neat homes, I think. There's a there's like a furniture store, an electric bike place center. But this, my friends, this right here is what makes West Cornwall so popular. As we cross the mighty Housatonic through this covered bridge and in to Sharon. And now we're on the other side. And as a result, we have now formally concluded our stop in Cornwall. And I'm just basically gonna make a nice little circle here. And we will go back across that covered bridge. There is an area of Cornwall called Cornwall Bridge and it's actually behind me back that way. Funny enough, this is not Cornwall Bridge. Oh. As you can tell, it's just one car at a time, so I'll let this nice Mercedes pass through. You got it. And we'll make our way back into West Cornwall. Imagine there was a time when a lot of these bridges were around and now in Connecticut I think there's only maybe two, three at best. One here and the other one being the Comstock Bridge. Um, I don't remember where that is. Colchester maybe? Help me out here folks. I can't know everything. But this is one of the, the, the scenic views that people always uh, draw attention to. If you're an artist, if you're a painter, if you're a photographer, this is the spot to be. Just come sit up on these shores right over here and uh, put your crafts, your arts to the test to create some magic and create a masterpiece. It's beautiful here in the summertime and it's always pretty here when there's a little bit of snow on the ground too as well. Um, so uh, I'm being waved through. I'm just going to go across. but This is where we're going to conclude things folks. And uh, we're just going to drive around a little absentmindedly before we make our way back. So I hope I've inspired some of you guys to want to come and check out beautiful Cornwall. I know I did. Bye-bye. Oh, and Happy New Year, folks.